Hey folks, Animana here, and today we're going to start going over these advanced jobs. I thought I would be able to do it in one video, but they are pretty difficult so far, at least the first one I've done. So I'm going to be going over strategies on how to beat this. So to reach the Shrine of the Archmages, you go from Swarky. So for this one, if you head the same way that you would go up to Victor's Hollow. And it's also right next to the shrine there of the Huntress where you get the, the uh, Hunter one. And if you head up to the east, uh, I believe it's called Dusk uh, Baron... East Dusk Baron Trail? Yeah, that's it. Um, but anyway, you're going to head there. People have requested whereabouts you go in the path. So I'm just going to show you that for the those of you who do want to know that. I was thinking with the other ones, just because I want to get through all those secondary classes that I would let you guys figure it out. You can always use the mini map. But for these ones, because they're kind of hidden and you got to walk a little ways out. I thought I'd at least cover them on this this one. Uh, let us know though if, if me showing you the exact direction to go to find the place is a bit much. Otherwise, we'll just try it this time. So, just skipping battles and all that. You're going to get to this cave, which is Shrine of the Ark Magus. Uh, this is a actual dungeon in comparison to the secondary job ones where they were just literally a room. Uh, with these ones, you have to walk through. There are elemental enemies here. At least with the, the Sorcerer one, this is the only one I've done so far. Always save that game. You can actually level up in here because the enemies are about level 50. And this is a recommended level of 50 to actually do this uh, Archmagus battle. Make sure you're healed up. Make sure you save. Uh, and I guess you could also go into your equipment. I'll go into the jobs I've got. So I've got Cyrus as a cleric slash scholar. I have Primrose as a scholar slash dancer. I have uh, Therian as a merchant slash thief for uh, BP boosting, actually. And then I've got uh, Harnet as Apothecary slash hunter because I really like her. Well, actually, it's crucial that you can uh, slow down the enemies. Saving Grace is a massively important thing for this strategy that I'm using as it will allow you to heal above your maximum hit points at least two times the amount of hit points your characters have, which is very important. Otherwise, I've got Encore just for those those hairy situations where a character dies and you can at least get one back up. Maybe there's a, a an attack that wipes out the whole party. I've got two characters with that and then the other ones I've just chosen whatever skills and I was able to get through this with this strategy pretty easily. I am currently about level 50. Uh, I would recommend that too. I'm sure there are many people that can probably do it at level 30 onwards, but for me, I'm a bit of a baby and that's what I did. There's a whole, also a bunch of chests in here, There's, they've mostly got items and a bit of money. Uh, also, hired help is a big use here. I just thought I would show you what the enemies look like in here, uh, just so that you've got a reference of what to expect. And I'm also going to jump forward a little bit, just so you can get an idea of what kind of experience and gold and all that kind of stuff you're going to get from these enemies. So there you go, about 2,500 gold, 500 to 600 experience, and about 150 or so uh, job points. So it might actually be better to level up outside, it'll be a little bit easier and you'll get about the same amount of uh, reward, I guess. And then you're going to work your way all the way through, and eventually you'll see up here, I'm going to actually get hijack just before I get there. Uh, you are going to get to the uh, the altar there, save again, uh, make sure you're all set up and you're going to go here and you're going to get the similar kind of, um, I guess, little text bit before you actually get into the battle that we had with the secondary jobs, but this one will also prompt to double check if you are okay with going into this battle or if you had second thoughts like, oh, actually I forgot to equip this thing so you can retreat and just go back there. But we're going to jump in. So I'm going to show you the whole battle. You can skip through this. What I'll do is in the description, I'll put an actual timestamp for when I do actually beat the boss and get that, um, that subclass so I can show you what it's like. But leg hold trap with Hunter is actually super important because you can slow down the enemy and put them to the back of the queue. Merchant skills, I am using uh, Therion to donate BP. I'm using it for both the dancer and the healing characters, and we'll get into the strategy first off. But when he does do hit that first cast, uh, just focus on getting that health boosted. You can see I'm up to about 7,500 or so health there. Um, and from this point, it is kind of a battle of attrition. You just wait for... You can see that debuff I've got on my character where it's the up arrow with the X and 5, that actually means off the top of my head, someone can correct me because I haven't got it up in front of me, but I'm pretty sure that means you can't put any any buffs on your characters while that is an effect. So I actually did that by mistake in this, but I quickly uh, alleviated that and, and made sure I did it the right way around. 
but you're going to be working your way down and just, uh, you know, breaking the enemy. What I recommend is uh, don't don't waste your boosts. Just let them stock up. Use that elemental damage or the weapon damage to actually build up that uh, shield break. You can probably heal some more. As you can see here, it basically does nothing more. So I believe that once you get that bonus heal, you have to burn through it a bit before you can uh, top it up again. Leg hold trap again. Just get that boosted up because the more of a stack you have of that, the less you have to worry about updating it and you can actually use Harnet for other things. So I'm also going to be putting Armor Corrosive. I didn't really need to use this. That's the only time in the battle I did this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the point where I can say this is the setup and you can watch the rest of the battle and then we'll jump to the end. Uh, energizing Pomegranates are also really good to make sure that you've got that stock of boost points just before we are going to set up the whole thing. More or less what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the Dancer Divine skill and then we're going to put it onto the Cleric and then from there the Cleric is going to cast uh, their Reflective Shield because this is an element, elemental magic enemy and they're going to be doing a lot of damage or multiple hits. So what it's going to do is basically you're setting it up so that when it does that area of effect attack on your whole party more or less what it's going to do is it's going to reflect it hits three times on each character like this as you can see just there it's going to do that but then it's going to reflect that another four times so it is pretty hilarious and overpowered and kind of broken so i'm just uh donating my my boost points here making sure that's all set up and then we just have to wait until we've run out of that um disabled buff ability or debuff kind of thing whatever you call it I'm sure it actually has a name. Uh, you could also consider maybe wasting some of your creatures that I've done. I'm literally just trying to figure out if there's anything to do while I'm waiting at the moment. So here we go, we got dancing. This is where I wasted it. Just as an example, I used that seal type um, seduction and it's not actually applied to my character. It should have above where Cyrus's name is, there should actually be like a two kind of angry face uh, blue, D, like blue buff icon. And that's when you know it's actually hit. Um, so that's just an example that you would probably don't want to waste those boost points because now I have to use another energizing pomegranate on, on Primrose. And now I have to wait one more turn and we should be okay. We have the hit points boosted enough to more or less allow us to sit through all this damage. Uh, I've had it where it, when I didn't have any overhealing, basically he would be doing about 3000 damage. And it would get to the point where it's that battle of attrition where I was trying to revive everyone and he just pass it again and whack everyone out. So this is why it's very important. The main step is to make sure you've got saving grace on every single character. It is a little bit of a grind to get it on all of them. But once you've got it, uh, there's nothing to worry about. So now I'm in the phase where I don't actually have that debuff on me. So I can actually start doing some uh, more damage and stuff, making sure I've got that heal mode on just before I get the, the, the buff set up and the reflect set up, more or less. So there is going to be another thief job we'll get into, or merchant um, ability that's really useful when he's completely broken. Uh, but now I'm in the setup phase. I'm ready to go now. So we're going to use Dancer. We're going to use uh, Seal Tights. Uh, what is it? Seduction. We're going to put that on the Cleric. I'm sure you can probably put it on anyone, but I'm putting it on the Cleric just in case, which is Cyrus for me. I'm just going to defend I think here oh no I'm just gonna do some damage why not he's got about 170,000 hit points so you probably want to whittle him down when you do get the chance anyway I don't know why I was going for that dagger attack I think I was just trying to see if there was weaknesses which he already had a weakness so I'm actually going to cleric and I'm gonna to go to reflective veal and that's gonna put it onto all characters instead of one and you can see there we've been buffed with four reflects so once he does do an attack, we do need to refresh it again to make sure we get another four. Uh, but more or less, we're going to put that leg hold trap on again. Make sure that he is uh, completely at the back of the queue. When he does unbreak, he is going to be at the front of the queue. But after that, as long as he is unbroken, he is always going to be at the back of the queue. Uh, and then broken, he's not actually going to be able to do anything. Using Lord of the Flies, because he has a debuff, I don't believe it works on him all the time. But this is where it gets interesting. The first turn is always going to be him resetting his weaknesses and also increasing his barrier. And then you can see here, here we go. It's, you're going to see in a bit, it's even better when he's actually put up his new weakness and it's the spell that he's just cast because he basically destroys his own shield. Uh, and then, so it's going to hit 
12 times, I believe. And then uh, what's going to happen is he's going to go through 10 of those shields and then he's going to uh, have two extra hits of about 3,000 damage. So that's the setup. From here on out, unless your health starts to drop down, he gets the, you know, the jump on you. You probably want to heal then. Otherwise, it's just going to be topping up the, uh, the seal type seduction on the Cyrus or your cleric and then casting reflective veal again to keep it up and it's going to keep doing that and you can also go to I'm, I'm doing um, donate BP here but you can also go to what I recommend is having about 90,000 gold and doing the completely maxed out hired help the final one um, I'm not sure off the top of my head but you'll see it in here I'll cast it and it will do anywhere from a, I think maybe two to four hits of about 2,000 or 3,000 damage per hit so it can pretty much tear through his hit points pretty well um, but that's the basics of it I, so the, the things to go over is we have uh, the heal more with uh, saving grace so that that gives you that meaty hit point pull uh, I also collected 40,000 gold if you want to make some money um, but once we've got that done and we are outside of that initial debuff uh, cast that he does so we can actually put buffs onto our party you want to go seal tight seduction on your cleric and then you want to go reflective veal and that'll go onto your whole party and give you about four casts of it and you want to keep refreshing that that's the basics of it so I've gotten into my second round here you know I mean it's probably easy enough that you might not have to go to that trouble but I just wanted to get this through and show you just how you can do this worry free because this is actually a pretty difficult battle if you don't have those kind of cheesy uh, I guess abilities to use I'm sure if you were over leveled you could probably do this really easily but at level 50 it was a challenge so here it is veteran soldier and swordplay was that ability so sorry, sorry I was wrong about five to six thousand hit points damage is pretty good so he's done 10,000 damage and he has 170,000 so the other things to note just while we're here while we're talking about it so once you break him and he unbreaks out of it he is going to reset his weaknesses so don't focus on those weaknesses uh, maybe if you've got a uh, a scholar you could reveal those with uh, is it uh, identify or I can't remember the name of the skill I'm sorry um, do that to reveal them if you're really struggling otherwise just try to do as much damage as you can do leg trap to, to slow him down and then you could do amputate with an axe user maybe or you could use that veteran soldier um, hired help but for now I'm just gonna leave that and allow you to watch the rest of it he's pretty much almost dead at this point so hopefully this is gonna help you quite a bit and you can at least follow along and and not have much trouble doing this actually this is what I was talking about where he can break his own shield it's pretty funny to watch anyway I'll talk to you right at the end of the video when we get the skill or the the subclass unlocked
In the hunt beginning. Using this. It's fight with courage. All right, so we have the Sorcerer Advanced Secondary Job unlocked. So we're gonna look into what it actually has. I still need to upgrade this myself. There's some information that I've found online about this. So you can see that it, it can equip bows as well. So jumping into the skills we have, we have Ignis and Air, which does fire damage on all enemies, and Glacis Claudia, which does ice damage on all enemies, and then we unlock the rest. We can also get Tonturus, Canair, Ventus, Solterre, Lux, Congrair, and Tenebrae, Opier. Those are going to do lightning, wind, light, and dark damage in that order. And there's also Elemental Break, unleash a powerful staff attack on a single foe that reduces the target's elemental defenses for two turns. Uh, the fifth, or the final, it's not the fifth, but it's the final, the, the Divine Skill you can unlock is called Dresang's Spell. Uh, divine Skill for three turns, elemental attacks performed by a single chosen ally will hit for critical damage. And then we've also got the support skills as well. So the ones we get from this one, the first one is Intimidation, which requires four skills to unlock. This one grants a 25% chance that foes will begin battle with reduced physical attack and elemental defense. Equipping this skill with multiple characters will have no added effect. The second one at five skills unlocked, Stronger Strikes, increased damage dealt when striking a foe's weak point. Then for the sixth one, we'll get Elemental Aid, Elemental attacks consume double SP but also do additional damage. And finally, augmented elements at 7 skills unlocked increases damage dealt by elemental attack. So increased with that and also I guess maybe the, the magic boosting ability that you get from Scholar would do some pretty, pretty crazy damage. So that's how you get the Sorcerer. That's what it's all about. I hope this information has been useful and at least for me, like me jumping into it when I first went to do this video, I wanted to do all four of these um, these advanced jobs and I jumped in and basically got destroyed, I got decimated, so I had to do a bit of research and then I found that I had to do a bit of leveling to make sure I had those saving grace on all four characters, very important you unlock that. And then once I had that done, I was able to go ahead and uh, play the game and do the boss and record the video. So I'm just going to show you here as an example. I'm going to be casting this Lux Congrier and you can see it does all those those uh, hits on the enemies similar to what the boss was doing themselves. So if you've seen the boss you've probably seen all the spells and gives you a taste of what you're actually going to get. And I'm assuming it's going to be exactly the same for the other advanced job bosses as well. 
So if this has been useful in any way, give us that thumbs up. Otherwise, uh, maybe give us a comment if you've got another strategy that you found really useful because I've heard of some other things people do as well that I feel like I wasn't good enough at the game to be able to do it myself. Uh, otherwise, subscribe to get more of these Octopath Traveler guides coming out. Most likely the, the rest of those other advanced jobs. Maybe some advanced tips once I've got my head around the game completely. And then also, I'm most likely going to be streaming every few days another chapter for everyone to go through. So anyway, I'm Anna Mana. Enjoy the rest of your day, morning, evening or night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll catch you next time. Have a good one. Bye.